for community policing as an end to the continued insecurity across the country. Springing up from the northeastern part of the country to the northwest, the south-south, as well as the Niger Delta region. Now, while on one hand, a lot of people are advocating for community policing, on the other hand, it has been met by a lot of kickback by some individuals. Now, the question is, is community policing the solution to Nigeria's security crisis? To answer this question, we are now being joined by ACP Eric Obi, retired, uh, who is a security expert as all, and also a retired police officer who has served the nation in different capacities as an officer. He's joining us in the studio to lend his thoughts to the topic of community policing. Hello, good morning, and a warm welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. It's for wonderful to have you in the studio. Thank you very much for having me around. And firstly, I must say thank you for your service to the nation thank as you. well. Thank you very much, my brother. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Community policing is a big topic. <sighs> uh, like I mentioned, yes, there are two parties involved. Yes. Some for, others against this. Yes. What party do you think you fall under? I will give you... The opportunity of taking, making a choice yourself. All right, fantastic. I'm going to give you the pros and the cons okay. of it, but we must start from the philosophy itself. The umbrella of community policing under the model of community policing is intended to structure a relationship and partnership between the police and the community for which it serves. And what is the purpose of that partnership? The purpose of that partnership is to solve problems of the community. And it, it is to partner with the community to solve the people-centric challenges of that community. It is, it, is, it is important that the community engagement and participation is active and alive. It is even more important to ensure that the policing relationship is localized to the problem-solving need of that community. We call that people-centric approach. You must approach community policing from the people's viewpoint. Yes. How they want it, or else you'll be wasting your time because you will be a, a stranger for them. So what is what are the key elements? The key elements in trying to achieve that are you must ensure you have a neighborhood policing structure. Yes. You must have a food patrolling structure within the neighborhood if you must deal with the situation. You must have community meetings. You must have a collaborative arrangement with which people and the community will always be in touch with themselves. That is the only time people believe that this is their police. And until that happens, you will not have a situation where you can sit down and resolve problems. This gives you a clip yes. of the philosophy of community policing. Of, uh, community policing. If that is true, then our question now is, what is the challenge? Why has it not worked? That's a big question. That is a big question. One of the reasons, or the core reasons why it has not worked is corruption. Oh. On what level now? Corruption at the participating partnership level. From my own practical experience, I tell you something that will shock you. It will shock you to know that those who want to participate in community policing do not see themselves as coming to volunteer a service yeah. for their nation. They see themselves as coming to wield influence. If you come in with an influence dream to take over the policing job, then you are going to meet a brick wall. 
that is the first challenge of persons who decide to put themselves together and come together as PCRC, Police Community Relations Committee. Community, yes. Most communities find themselves in a situation where those persons begin to influence police cases and begin to handle matters at home and hope that they know the DPO, they know the area commander, they know, and therefore they can decide to... They, thereby cutting off that exactly. channel of communication between them and the Nigeria police. And thereby complicating and compounding the matter. Even when issues of arrests yes. are made, you see members of the PCRC running in and out because of the original contact with the police under that umbrella to begin to truncate or sideline justice, creating a problem for the real people who would have come to make a complaint. Yes. Yes. So you can see that is part of the original pro Let me go to the pros. All right. Of, so that you can take a view or yes. Look, the, the, the pros of community policing is very clear. It improves trust between the people and the police, which is a very important element. If you, a police team is working for the community and the community do not trust them, how will they get information? There is no collaboration. There is no trust. Therefore, collaboration will be very difficult. But if there is trust, then that relationship will reduce crime to the benefit of that same community. Because, because in, in instances where the police is not readily available to tackle the issues, exactly. the community members do take care of the issue and hand over the uh, culprits to the police. Exactly. Because the community members are originally part of the whole operation. Yes. So there is this synergy between the community and their police, which enhance cohesion. So when there is cohesion, therefore there is a seamless flow of information and data, mm. if and when necessary. And that is the original philosophy of that. And if that should succeed, they were talking about a more effective management of the crime scenes. And I want to emphasize that every situation, every community have their peculiar crime scenarios. And therefore, if we make a mistake to believe that all trainings and all communities have the same policing technique, it's not correct. That's why the people must be part of the thinking. So they can tell us, look, this is the peculiarity of our challenge here. This is where you can help us deal with the challenge. And then the police would know what units to deploy. Them. Exactly. What kind of training they need, what kind of people to deploy, how they will relate with them. It is part of the challenge we are having. Let me tell you, the uh, cons, that is the contract, tr yeah. trusting part of it. Exactly. We raise the issue of corruption and mistrust among the people because of those kind of situations that has arisen. We raise the issue of limitation of funds, the scarce resource. Because the scarce resources and infrastructure, there is a linguistic and cultural challenge which is more important to me and you. A police officer comes into an environment. He does not understand the culture of the people, the linguistics environment, the traditional uh, tradition of the people, and therefore what people call a crime in their own environment may not be the same thinking of the criminal code or the penal code. So you must make sure that you bring down the law to match the reality of the community you are dealing with. Or else you'll be a stranger in their midst and you will not be policing them. They, will tr they won't trust you. That has remained the challenge. So there is a need to train and retrain the force itself. And then there must be a dynamism where the, 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 the linkage between the force and the community is so well enshrined that they understand themselves in such a way that there won't be a problem when trying to enforce the law. For example, you can't call to a community and tell them that uh, you want to take away their chief because you think he has committed a crime. A crime. Of course you have a revolt in your hands. 
you would, you would have a certain pushback from the community members. So quick means you don't even understand the simple dynamics of the community you are supposed to be working with, not against, with, with. to remove crime. Because you think you're a judge. You can't just do things the way you want to do them. Now, now that, that, that's, that's another issue that I believe um, a lot of Nigerians uh, have with the Nigeria police. The, the assertion that the police or security personnel, now narrowing it down to the police, can do anything in a community or in a setting just because they are the police you can't question them you can't just let's go to the station and then we'll talk there it has always been an issue that is where community relations is very important mm. so that we can understand ourselves better yeah if you want to invite a very important person whom you know inviting him is going to stir the community why don't you make it in such a way that he will be outside his area of influence so that he will not feel disgraced when he has so much influence and he will want to throw back his weight. And show that he is in charge of the domain. Here, he is in charge of the domain. That is where, the, where, that is where there, is, there is usually an escalation of violence. That is it. Because we don't seem to understand the dynamics of police community relations mm. in community led policing. We must bring it down. Okay. We, we have plenty of time. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here we are. If we're going to do the default, then you find out that because of that disagreement, we have issues around not understanding the cultural threats yes. of the community. We don't understand where there is terrorist threats. And then because we don't understand where there is terror interest, then we then we have a problem with managing organized crimes. Because in every community, there are some levels of organized crimes. Some young men are maybe interested in doing business, dealing with hemp, mm. planting farms of hemp. And buyers of those see it as a business. It's organized. But it's illegal. But it's illegal. So how do you get a breakthrough? If you are acting alpha, like God, you have a problem there. So it, it, it's a matter of better understanding the community that you are in, exactly. the dynamics of the people, yes. their businesses, this, their culture, their, culture their, their ways of life, and fine-tuning your yes. approach. Let them be part of the policing of their own environment to bring the peace and progress. Ordinarily, you will not find the organized criminal. The organized criminal has to be a pain in their ass for them to say, look, among us, this is the... This is the take him away. Take him out. That is part of the major problem we have in Nigeria. But in, in, in situations where you have maybe a major criminal in a community or a setting that is sort of quite benevolent to the people of that settlement... Yes. ...and uses his influence, his money and power to zip up the mouths of community dwellers, he's committing the crimes, almost like a Robin Hood type of setting. Fortunately, when the crime escalates yes. to a point that it becomes injurious to the economy of the country, it will be noticed. Yes. And when it is noticed, <coughs> even the community leaders will want to distance themselves from that group that have escalated that the criminality. Yeah. And they will be, they say, look, we know that there's something wrong here, but we're not part of it. That's what we're seeing all over the place. So we we need to do something in the area of uh, reforms. Mm -hmm. We have to look at reforms uh, successful implementation of in Nigeria of community policing, if you have to be able to get it going on, we must address corruption and accountability. Now, when you when you talk about reforms, what, what sort of reforms are you referring to in terms I'll, of... I'll get there. Okay. We must invest in training and retraining of the police officers 
and supply of infrastructures, for example, were so docile over the use of AI, artificial intelligence. Which is in vogue now. Which is in vogue. In fact, some of the things that people are scared of talking about can be picked quietly. When you place artificial intelligence in the right positions, they will tell you, me, I know if you talk, oh, but if you go like this, all you need to do is to send undercover people, drop elements of artificial intelligence here and there, and the data will come, including faces and people. I mean, FBI has been doing it Hello, for they, all over the world. So, what is so difficult about such cheap technology that should be used today? Especially when you are talking about common criminals, not even terrorists who are organized. If you can deal with terrorists who are organized with AI, then how much less ordinary uh, common criminals that uh, turn around the places and streets? That are well known in the community. Of course. We can do that. Even you meet intelligence. When you are trusted, when there is sufficient trust, then we don't have a problem with human, that is human intelligence. Yes. They will give you the information. There is so much open intelligence around. For you. It's about sitting down and, and discussing and just throwing the question around. Ah, that guy is doing too well. This. Yeah. Another guy will tell you he's not doing very well as a criminal. Hmm. Uh, and then and so. pin. You pick the, then you can follow the track. Because there's no, there no smoke without fire. Of course. There's no smoke without fire. Now, in, in on those states, interestingly, uh, here on the Nigeria Tribune, uh, I, I think I will take the story again. Now, as the Nigeria Tribune greets your screen, let's uh, take a look at uh, the situation in Oyo State where you can see a picture of the governor, Shei Makinde, uh, inspecting the parade of 480 newly recruited Amotekun Corps forest rangers uh, during their passing out parade in Oyo State. Now, the security network agency, Amotekun Corps Forest Rangers, uh, trained at the NYC orientation mm. uh, camp in Ishain, uh, Oyo State. Uh. 480 newly recruited core members, Amotekun core members now, Forest Rangers, yes. into the system. This is part of the age-long community policing strategy yes. that a lot of people have called for. Very, the Kun, very, very I, can, I the, can say it again. The, 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 the Ebubago uh, system in the, in the southeast, which hasn't really been uh, thriving as much as Amotekun is doing in oil well, and other southeastern states. The background. Southwestern states. Good, good question. I'm looking at it. The, 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 the real issue is about the philosophy. Yes. Is it sugar-coated with other underground intentions? If it is not sugar-coated with other underground intentions, then that local outfit should be a very important arm that will relate with the national policing environment to make crime easy to manage. But here, they cross the line. Instead of arresting the criminals and make them available, for the police to handle, they pick the criminals and punish them themselves. Crossing the line. Crossing the line. So when you do that, you don't expect the police to keep quiet. Especially when you are not properly trained and not properly empowered. The question is, who empowers you? Who trained you? How do you get controlled? Or how do they manage your excesses? But, but the, the, the governor as the chief security officer of the, the state The governor may be the chief security officer, but the, the constitution does not permit him to train policemen, law enforcement officers. So are you saying invariably... I'm they, saying invariably... These uh, sort of organizations are somewhat illegal, they not, are, not, not, not legally permissible they, in the constitution. They are not legally implementable within the country, but they are serving a purpose. Yes. The purpose is the stopgap, the lacuna. <coughs> yes. for quit they are serving should be so managed that they don't cross the back especially where there is so much acute uh, gap in the number of policemen yeah. available in all the communities there are so many communities that there are no police officers at all and may never have if there is a crime committed in the point X 
and you want to call a policeman 24 kilometers, 30 kilometers away, and as you get there, he tells you that he doesn't have a vehicle. He, does, he cannot travel to that place alone. He will need about two people to go along with him, and he will need a vehicle to come there. By the time you come there, I return to the scene of incident. It, it, something it, is wrong. Some, something is wrong, yes. So we will have to find a way to reduce what we call the react time between the time a crime is committed and the time the person is uh, apprehended. If you take other nations, in the U.S., react time is 10 minutes. Anywhere in the U.S. You commit a crime, within 10 minutes, within 10 minutes somebody's target. there. Unfortunately for us, our react time can be indefinite. It could be the next day. Or not never at or all. Never. So, if governors begin to find out that there is a problem there, I would have thought that they should be using the community policing technique. The money they are putting in to put in to train their own people and put them on ground should have been, of course, used to improve the policing equipment for their state. Yes. But because there is more than one motive, they want to show that they can employ people, they can engage people, they want to make sure that there is law and order, yes. So there is, it's more of a political... Uh, than uh, more of a... Yes, the more of a security consciousness. A consciousness, it's more of a political point. Trying to, score the, trying to score political points it, within the state. Exactly. It's getting clearer. That is it. Than the part, because the IGP, for crying out loud, has always said he needs more policemen. And I would have thought that the governor should be saying that, look, give these people more money to recruit more policemen so we can have more policemen in our communities. But no, they want to train their own men who will remain eternally loyal to them yes. to service their needs other than the issue of law and order. I get you. So that is where we have the issue of corruption. On the part of those who are thinking about what they want to do with the community policing as against the national thinking of the community policing model. You can take a community policing model from a nationalistic viewpoint where you can do what? You can now say, look, every police commissioner here who comes here should train the men to deal with the people-centric, the state-centric challenges of my state. And here is my aid to ensure that they deal with the people-centric challenge of my state. I have my men who can walk as neighborhood watchers. Just a typical example of what we have in Lagos. They have their neighborhood watch. No noise. They pay them. But they, the way they work their system is so that anybody is a major child, they make sure that they gather information. The intelligence network yes. is so efficient that the governor will hear, the, the uh, local government chairman will hear the information. And before you know it, the command, uh, the state uh, command has heard about it or the div and action will be taken immediately. Nobody is complaining about the neighborhood watch in Lagos. Efficient. Very, very. Very efficient. Yes. When they came in, it, there was no challenge. They have worked well with the system. And it, it's, it's a wonderful plus for that state. And I wish every state can copy something like that without being unnecessarily ambitious. Let, let, let's turn our attention back to the Nigeria police force okay. itself. Uh, you are a retired officer, yeah. served the country for many years, yes. and you understand the system very, well. very, very well. Yes. Uh, there is a situation somewhere in Yola, at the Mall State, where there is this uh, cult-like group known as the Sheila Boys. I did a documentary there uh, a couple of years ago, and one of the things that caught my attention when I was doing that documentary was that the community members I interviewed within the Yola Metropolis said that most times 
These Shila boys are just boys that hang around in the neighborhoods. They know their houses, they know their parents, they know the mosque that they go to, they know the church that they go to. And when they commit these crimes, they, they are actually into seizure of phones, stabbing people and taking their phones and all that. When they are arrested and taken to the police station, the next day, the Shila boy is back to the neighborhood. And whoever it is that handed them over to the police, bears the brunt of whatever the Shila boy and his gang will do to them. Now, this has created this sort of distrust in the police within the Yola metropolis to the point where they began killing the Shila boys by themselves. Yes. And there was a de-escalation of peace in the state. How do we address situations like this where there is a compromise within the Nigeria police? Because the community leadership has not been sitting down with the police to discuss. Every community has a community leadership. Yes. They are chiefs, opinion make leaders. If the police performs in such a way that the community leaders are uncomfortable and the youth leaders are uncomfortable, in the point of the meeting, they will point that. Say, this is what happened to this person's child. You released him. This is what happened to this person's child. You released him. In this meeting, we don't want to see it again. If it occurs again, then we will revert to taking the laws into our hands. And we'll tell them that if this meeting was held here, we told you. So that conversation was not had before? No, there is no communication. So this is why the police community relations, community led policing is absolutely final. Don't block it with any elitist thinking. Yes. Follow the rules of engagement. Activate the rules of engagement and keep it alive. If you dare move it and keep it alive, the community will become calm and safe automatically because everybody you meet knows his role to ensure that his community is safe. So the criminals will quit because there is no business anymore. But if community leaders, when good people keep quiet and the criminals reign, that is where they will, they will survive. You know, that is the point. The yeah. irony is when, when good people keep quiet, yes. crime thrives. Now that, 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 that is on one hand, yes. uh, talking about sort of, uh, some sort of compromise yes. within the, the, the Nigeria police system where some bad elements you know, are... We, I am not going to even argue the issue of pro-crime and anti-crime police being. Yes. We have few elements of pro-crime police officers yes. who support those elements. And the moment they are identified, it is the place of the police high command to take them out. And they have always for those who have always been identified to take them out. No compromise, oh. no matter how highly placed. But the question is, those who will, are supposed to go and report at terrorized by their compromising police uh, group yes. that if I see you here, I'm going to deal with you. I'll come with you after all. I have, I have uh, access to arms. So the fear is, am I going to tell the police, maybe this boy will hear and then come after me? Yes, there are issues like that. But there is a way you can reach up the high command and leave the information without uh, getting known. So that's, that, that, that's the place of confidentiality in the system now. That is it. The issue of confidentiality in the system. If you don't trust your immediate environment, go higher. And make the report. And make your, I'll make your complaint. Deposit your complaint in the higher environment. Now, now if you remember in 2009 when uh, Muhammad Yusuf, uh, the supposed first leader of the Boko Haram sect, was killed by members of the Nigeria police yes. at a police barracks in uh, my degree, the Borno State yeah. capital. Uh, that was when the genesis of Boko Haram insurgency began. Yeah. And people were being recruited from the communities within the state. They had families, they had uh, relations, you know, they knew them. They would go out, carry out their attacks, and come back home. 
And it was like the communities were shielding them at first because it had not escalated to the point where it was exactly. eating everybody up. Yes. In terms, in situations like this, yeah. how do we ensure that not only the criminals are being, you know, are being uh, gone after, but also the people aiding and abating them are also brought to book, like their families. When I did this analysis, I told you there must be meetings. Yes. We should be sitting down. We should be talking to ourselves. We should be able to identify what is our challenge. If your farms are permanently under attack and you are paying tax to somebody else instead of the government. Like in the case of <coughs> Sina and, and mm -hmm. in, the, in the Northwest. So what happened? That you are paying tax to and uh, paying allegiance to another government in Kabarat. Why is the leadership of the community afraid and paying to another community? But don't you think that perhaps let, they are let me tell you, I, I'll, I'll give you so many okay. scenarios. Okay. Right. What you have there is what you call a governance gap. It's not about the policing issue alone. It's a governance gap. How many times do government have infra infrastructures in those communities that we are talking about that those terrorists and bandits bandits have taken control? Bandits are in control of those areas where there is governance gap. That's correct. So anything short of that, we're jokers. Government must move to ensure that their establishments and position where the moment government presence is being seen, people will now know that, oh, there is a government here. It's not just about uh, carrying their food to go and sell in the city. The bandits can afford to terrorize and collect the food for free or collect cash and go and sell across another country. Part of this terror system is that bandits are either collecting the food directly or collecting money. They give you an amount of money, you come and pay them. Yes. Government is not interested because they have not expanded governance to that environment. They don't even care. So if the developmental index of a people is less than zero, and then the bandits have taken advantage of it and are now in charge, who is to be blamed? Will you blame the police? No, certainly the government. So... You should be able to know where to lay the bog. Well, that's that's an interesting take. Uh, it's it's certainly about uh, uh, the lack of government presence, especially in communities ravaged by either insurgency yes. or banditry in the country. And of course, uh, much as uh, ACP uh, OB is retorting here or reiterating. It's uh, best that the government ensures that in every nook and cranny of the country, there is some sort of government presence, thereby necessitating a proper security presence, which sort of pushes away crime and criminality from the system. Now, still staying with uh, issues of insecurity, uh, it, it, it's quite unfortunate that uh, all of these indices are being put into place and you can clearly see that it is a matter of shortfall in some certain decisions or indecisions on the part of the government, on the part of some criminal uh, elements, on the part of some corrupt police officers yes. who are pro-crime. But let's look at the police force holistically. The pro-crime police officers, hmm. do you think that perhaps the reason why they are pro-crime is due to the lack of adequate remuneration and welfare packages not granted to them by the government as it should? There have been so many talks about police reforms hmm. in the past and it appears that uh, uh, the Nigeria police isn't really a hot topic for the government. I would have wish I don't go there because if I go there it will just offend me well, but, well, uh, but well, I'll have well, to touch it let me just touch, touch it, it. Yes. let me just touch it um, it's unfortunate that the weight of the responsibility plays on the shoulders of a police officer is so poorly understood by the same people that the police is supposed to put on their life on the line to protect. Yes. That is why in every planning and structuring, policing 
as security is almost always the last thing. Yes. We talk about in this third world. Incidentally, that is what we should be speaking about first. What are we putting in place to ensure that our children do not go into criminality or are not tempted to go into criminality? What are we doing to ensure that those who are ensuring that our children stay within law and order remain not tempted enough to collect from those criminal elements? Yes. What is the nature of their pension and their gratuity after service? You cannot but believe that there is no police officer in this country, especially those below the ranks of commissioners and below, yes. who are leading a life of a normal person after retirement. And it's a reality. That's a reality. The reality is that the pension cannot even take you home from the day you receive the home. So if younger people are seeing what is happening to their seniors, what they, do you th they will better prepare what, what do you think they will do now they will to ensure to that they don't get into that kind of mess? They will want to prepare themselves <coughs> for when they retire thereby prompting them into being so depressed. they know that this is the time to prepare for that terrible day and mark up as much as possible that is the challenge so government yes. will have to look at it and make sure that if a person takes on the job of policing his country and keeping his life on the line his benefit is supposed to be sufficient for him to forget about now and focus on the job. Focus on the job. You cannot. No, no American yes. talks about the pension of a police officer. Not even at the state level, their pension is humongous. And for life, after service, because they have no business doing anything other than the best for their country because they know that they have already been protected. As I speak to you, we don't even have an opportunity where you can walk into a bank and tell the bank that, uh, look, you are a police officer and you want to establish a visa, they will give you 5 million, 10 million because of your records of service to your nation. It can't happen it, because the modality has not been put in place. Yes. So who, why should that not be put in place? In countries like Asia, you have the military bank. After your service, whatever you want, you go and take your money, they do it, and pay back the money on a, a friendly interest loan yes. to the state because the state has recognized your effort. And you walk knowing that the state will stand up for you. And the country as well. That is your country. And your family will be so proud of you that you joined the service to save your country and you came out retired, not disgraced. Oh. But today, you find a situation where people will steal billions, they will be disgraced out of the force, and then there will be litigation for the, their kingdom come. And then they use the monies they have stolen or siphoned to fight the court case. <clears throat> <coughs> Go through the litigation. I said, until I said, I said till their kingdom come, the, the, the cases come, continue on their kingdom come. While they enjoy the money. While they enjoy the money. What kind of rubbish is that? We have a system challenge. It's a, it, it's a rigged system. Now, now, just this morning, I was uh, reading out the head newspaper headlines, and interestingly, uh, I, I saw that the federal government had begun implementation of about 300% uh, salary increment for judiciary workers in the country, uh, alongside a recent commissioning of 40 housing units for judges in the FCT in Katampi. Uh, th these are all very juicy packages for the they judiciary. They are not. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let okay. me put the record straight. Okay. I have spoken about this in another forum. Yes. That the issue of service men is not about the salary. 
is about the packages around the risk element that they are exposed to. It should be properly configured. And their salary, incremental salary engagement is not supposed to be something of debates. It should happen normally. Yes. They should be they should have put in place a system where their incremental salary should just flow. Naturally. Naturally. Because of the risk element they are exposed to permanently. They should have an advantage over the rest of the citizens because they have a higher responsibility, the duty of care. And how would that mean? They should be what we call the uh, calibration uh -huh. of a situation where a police officer of a certain grade should be able to be allowed a certain amount of loan for his family business and to be paid along with paid along with the special and gratuity if he doesn't finish paying the money while still serving. That will remove his hands from the issues of going to find money anywhere else. I mean, it, it, it appears as if the only thing that um, maybe most servicemen are opportune to have is probably an overdraft or a bank loan or a salary advance. And these are not quite sustainable. What is not sustainable? That's available to every civil servant. Exactly. It's so and you, cannot, you cannot get a, a, a salary loan and all that and all that at how much? Which you will put it put directly, the put it directly configured against your salary. Yes, you cannot take it beyond your salary level. So, the CBM policy environment on those issues are not sensitive to certain jobs, wrong. And you want them to perform magic. I'm not saying that crime is good, but I'm saying that you cannot deliberately provoke crime and you expect it not to happen. And that's 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 a strong assertion. Yes. What, what if that, if you carry a bag of let me tell you something. Yes. You carry a bag of money and display it on the screen of your car. Money. Just stack it there in the screen of your Lots car. Lots of money. Yeah, but, and abandon the car. And just pack the car outside there. And you think that the man okay, just take even twenty naira. 200 naira and put it in front of your car. Just leave it there and walk back to your office. And you think that a, 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 a street boy, a street orchard, uh -huh. will care whether if he breaks a screen of 200, uh, of uh, 250,000 to take 200 naira, would bother him. It certainly won't bother him because he wants to feed. So you haven't taken care of yourself. The superstructure is wrong. But, but in, in, in cases like um, the police barracks where you see some, well, some barracks are looking good and up to date, but in other cases, much as uh, where you would find army barracks looking all dilapidated and all, some police barracks also have that issue of dilapidation where uh, the last time any form of renovation was done there is probably more than a decade ago or decades ago and people are left with no other choice than to patch up their houses or issue to them by the force. I don't want to sound defensive. I don't want to sound I don't want to sound let me just tell you something. Okay. I don't want to sound defensive. Yes. What is happening to the oversight function, assuming that the police are giving sufficient money to do the things that the military are doing in their barracks? Why are they not being challenged on the oversight function of the CBA, of uh, the, uh, uh, the, National the National Assembly? Something is wrong. I leave it there. Well, well we have just uh, three minutes to wrap up this conversation, okay. uh, ACPOB. I would want to get your final thoughts on generally the welfare of police officers. Uh, you seem to have been quite aggrieved by um the the shortfalls of especially of uh, the government and the national assembly in ensuring that police welfare is is you know taken care of yes. in two to three minutes what mm. are your thoughts in one let me just tell you something the okay. community policing can be effective in nigeria if implemented thoughtfully yes how do you mean 
in dealing with what? Insecurity in Nigeria. Using the people-centric approach. A people-centric and a state-centric approach is that for each state, the key security challenges should be documented and the right people sent to deal with those environments in collaboration with the state governor and the national security apparatus with peculiarity of that state issue. This general attitude is wrong. I, I feel piqued that the concept of containment is not working. It is take them out. Out really? Yes, just take them. There is no point. The criminals will run from there wherever they come from. They come and attack. Then as soon as they attack, you chase them. And when they run away to their base, you leave them. And then start start and having, having and talks of, of negotiation. Yes, and then what then you start negotiating. What are you negotiating? Negotiate? No. That man is a criminal, he has attacked, he has attacked the state. Mm -hmm. And then he runs away. Then at the end of the day, you say, okay, uh, some funny environment is taking care of this, taking care of that, taking care of that. And then uh, that uh, you, 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 you are negotiating with another no nation for managing nothing. Yes. For what? Deal with the situation. Ten years and counting. Wrong. Well, uh, ACP Eric Obi, I must thank you so much for finding yes. the time to come on the program. Thank it's you. been a very, thank very you. informative and educative yes. session. Yes. And let's hope that uh, the appropriate authorities, if listening, uh, will uh, do the needful to ensure that uh, Please. crime is curbed and contained yes. in the country. Thank you very it's much. It's been a pleasure. Yeah.